What's up guys, it's your favorite Kiwi coach, and if you give me six months of your time, I'll give you the best golf swing of your life. So welcome back to the channel. In this particular video, we're gonna be doing another client before and after video. And this one's gonna be really interesting. If you've ever struggled with kind of the look of your elbow, maybe moving too far this way, or in the downswing, you tend to get your wrist to early release too much. This is gonna be the perfect before and after for you. So let's go ahead and jump in. But before we get into the video, I wanna give a quick shout out to our sponsor, and that is Kiwi Golf Japan. If you can't make it out to lessons to see me, or you're just too busy and you really can't take lessons, then Kiwi Golf Japan is gonna be the membership site for you. You can have access to over 150 plus videos of golf instruction. Take a look at all the information, try it out on the driving range by yourself. And again, if you're looking for that golf instruction but you can't come out to our lessons, it's the perfect service for you. With that out of the way, let's get into the video. All right, so to start out this video, let's go ahead and just play the swings through so you guys can see them really quick. So let me go do that. So that's the before swing right there. Let me go show you the after swing now. All right, so as you can see, the after swing had some major improvements. So let's go take some time now to go talk about really from the top of swing first, work our way down all the way to P6.5 and show you exactly what we changed. So if we go ahead and take a look at the top of the swing, the first thing I want to highlight is going to be the trill elbow position. So in the before swing, we're going to see this angle right here is right around 30 degrees, which means that the elbow was more so internally rotated than externally rotated. Now, the proper checkpoint, in my personal opinion, is going to be right around 15 degrees or less. Now, this is really dependent on the mobility of the player. Some people who can't move their elbows in so much might be able to get only 20 degrees at the max. Other people who are a little bit more mobile like myself can probably get 10 degrees or less. But I do think that, you know, right around 15 degrees is a good average for everyone. But if you're really not mobile, it's okay if you're a little bit higher than that. If you're more, mo uh, more mobile and you can do this, then definitely try to get 10 degrees or less. So if we go take a look at the after swing, let's go take a look at the elbow and the changes right here. So now you can see he's right around 17 degrees. So he's pretty much right within our typical average and he's roughly 23 degrees or what's that? 10, yeah, 23 degrees. Sorry, trying to do math here, guys. 23 degrees better than the before swing. So he's doing really good there. All right, another thing we changed at the top was gonna be the club shaft position. Now this isn't something that we necessarily talked about however once he started to get the trill elbow in a little bit better spot the club shaft kind of came along for the ride and he was able to get the club shaft on the forearm which is going to be our particular preference now for a lot of you guys out there this might not be the case you actually might get too flat when you change your elbow or you still might be too steep so just because you move the elbow that doesn't necessarily mean the club shaft will change as well but for this particular client it ended up working that way so it's something else that we didn't have to talk about which was good to do all right the last thing that we changed at the top of the swing was going to be the trill knee at the top of the swing and we're going to see in the before swing, he was right around like 150 something degrees or 146 that says right here. And if we go take a look at the after, he's going to be somewhere in the 160 range, which is going to more so my preference. If you guys have watched my uh, P1 through P4 checkpoint webinar, you know that for irons, I like to see right around in the 170 range. 165 is not that big of a deal, but 146 to me is too crouched basically. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at position five. And as we take down the before swing, we're gonna see that this elbow was definitely splitting like this. So this was something that we we're definitely gonna wanna change. But more importantly, what we were finding, and this is something I, feel, um, I see with a lot of people who early release. And as he was coming down to position five, he was also ulnar deviating his wrist like this. So it's a little bit more difficult to see from the down the line view. You can really see that maybe position six from down the line. This is a little easier to see more so from face on. However, I still think you guys can see some differences here. So let me go highlight them. All right, so as we get to position five, I think you guys can tell. Again, it's a little bit more difficult from this view, but in the before swing, he was definitely more ulnar deviated with this wrist. And then in the after swing, we can see that the wrists have actually had some set to them, right? So he's setted them in transition, which is more so what you want to do. So if you're one of those people out there struggling with early release, one of my best tips for you guys is most likely what's happening is three things. You're probably rotating your body too early, so you're gonna wanna get a better sequence. Second, you're probably getting your arms really narrow and then ulnar deviating your wrist because of that. So because you rotated your body early, your arms got narrow, you're gonna ulnar deviate your wrist, right? To try to create space. Instead, a better way to create space is keeping the bodies closed for a little bit, keeping the width in the arms, and then actually setting your wrist. That would be more so the proper transition and this is something we worked on with this particular client. As we get to uh, position 5.5, I think it's becoming more and more easy to kind of see this early ulnar deviated look. Let's go take the after swing down to P5.5 as well. So from here, the main reason why you can tell that um, the before swing is ulnar deviated is gonna be because of the hand height. So if I go take a look at the hand height and draw a line through here, it's right around belly button height at position 5.5. So if 
you ulnar deviate early, that means the club head gets lower to the ground earlier. So your P5.5, your P6, and your P6.5 are all going to happen earlier than a player who's not doing that. And you can clearly see that by this player on the after swing over here, we can see the hand height is right around the belt buckle height at this particular point, which is going to be where mo uh, most pros are going to be. All right, so that's it for you guys on YouTube. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me take some time to wrap up what was discussed. So the main things that we were changing at the top of the swing was going to be that elbow. Remember, it was internally rotated. Whenever you get that elbow internally rotated at the top, it's going to be difficult to get yourself to do this in a short amount of time. So most people either move their hands in front of them to get the elbow in front of the body, or they just continue to drop the hands, which splits the elbow even more, and then gets it stuck behind the rib cage. So ultimately, it'll be a lot easier to older deviate as well. Another thing I want to talk about is that early transition move. If you're going to rotate your body really early and get your arms narrow, that's going to cause you to ulnar deviate. You want to keep the body a little bit more closed, arms wide, and then from there, let the wrist set. That would be a lot better transition move. If you can do all those things, I think you'll get a lot better job of looking like the after swing in this video, which is really, really, really close to what we see a lot of our pros do. So if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure, give me six months of your time. I'll give you the best golf in your life, right? Go check out the link down below for our lessons. Check out the membership site. It really helps support the YouTube channel. And then other than that, I'll see you guys in the next video.